Cornell University in Ithaca, New York is our subject today. We're going to talk about how to get in. And that's a multifaceted question with Cornell because Cornell is this unusual school insofar as it's both an Ivy League school and some of its schools are public schools. And as a result, it really will depend how you frame your application, i.e. how you apply and where you're applying from, that will in many ways determine a great deal how you are viewed and therefore what type of acceptance rate you can expect your application to have to clear in order to earn the admissions decision uh, that you so desire. Uh, so let's get into the details with Cornell. First of all, Cornell is a member of the Ivy League and it has a very low acceptance rate overall. But like a lot of Ivy League schools that offer early decision, do remember that Cornell has at least a three times larger acceptance rate early decision than it does regular decision. I'm telling you this not to force you to feel like you need to apply early decision. However, if it is your first choice and you can stomach applying without knowing what type of aid you're going to get, uh, and you feel like your family needs need base aid or if your family doesn't need need base aid, but you're willing to go for it ED, uh, and you're willing to go if accepted, you are doing yourself statistical great help by applying early decision. Do apply early decision. It shows your ability to get your act together early. It's incredibly nice to get in by Christmas. So I highly suggest that you apply to Cornell early decision. Let's talk though, regardless of whether or not you apply early decision, how you can impact your chances on that application depending on how you answer certain questions, whether they be innocuous questions like what's your major or more detailed questions like the essays, which we'll get to in a couple minutes. As I mentioned at the top, did you know that the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences, the College of Human Ecology, the College of Industrial and Labor, Labor Relations, and also, of course, the College of Vet Medicine, um, they are all actually officially public schools. Uh, that are Cornell schools, but they are public schools. So as a result, when applying to those schools, um, you are being considered in a very different way than you are when you're applying to Dyson or you're applying to the School of Engineering or you're applying to the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If it's Cornell or bust in your brain and you really couldn't care less what you major in and you won't care at all even once you're there, and it's all about just getting in, if you want to give yourself the best statistical chance of getting into Cornell, aim for one of the publics. Aim for one of the public schools at Cornell. Um, but also realize that you should ideally still have a backstory that would align with and an essay that, of course, convinces them that this is a good fit. So you can't necessarily like pick it out of a hat and just make it all up unless you're a pathological liar, which I don't suggest. Um, but I do want you to understand that there are vastly different acceptance rates depending on the school at Cornell to which you are applying. And it's led to some people sort of joking about Cornell. Is it a real Ivy? Is it not? And it is a real Ivy, but it also isn't a real Ivy. So uh, there's nothing that I meant negative about that. It just means that it's sort of this hybrid case and a unique case. But there's a lot to love about Cornell on its application from my perspective. And we'll get to that in a minute. But do understand that what major you select, what school you select, will take you down very different paths. And so I encourage you to do your research. And hopefully, this lends us to our next tip that I'm about to give you. Uh, you have a backstory in the form of a robust extracurricular profile that you're going to be able to share on the application that will convince whatever school or Cornell you're applying to that Cornell at that school at Cornell is the right fit for you. So what do I mean by this? Well, not only are you going to fill out the activities page of the common application, you also on Cornell supplement have the opportunity to upload a full fledged PDF extracurricular resume. I say don't go over two pages here, but ultimately if you have a two page extracurricular resume that is nicely edited and describes in depth and breadth what you have achieved outside the classroom since you started high school, that would be very wise to share in the optional upload section of the 
uh, Cornell supplement. Many students, even Ivy League level students who are applying to Cornell, will skip this because they'll say to themselves, well, I listed my eight activities on the activities page of the Common App. I don't have really anything else to say about it. And they basically rush through the process of describing what they've achieved in high school in that activities page because there's no space, but they're happy with it and they move on and they've missed a huge opportunity to sell themselves in more detail, which that extracurricular resume upload allows you to do. So do it if you're a serious Cornell applicant. How do you put together an amazing extracurricular resume? You want to watch my course and purchase my course. It's very cheap. You can find the link to it below this video how to build an extraordinary extracurricular resume. It will teach you whether you're an actor, an athlete, uh, an artist, or anything in between, uh, how to build a beautiful extracurricular resume that will put your special talents and impressive accomplishments front and center. In addition to that, I do encourage, and I'll put it below this video as well, that you read my article, how to, uh, well, it's not how to, it's, uh, yeah, it's how to get into the Ivy League ethically because that article gives you a really strong foundation about how to have the fighting chance that you want to have to get into any Ivy League school. But as I often say, that will not be enough. The tips that I'm about to provide you are the ones that will hopefully help you seal the deal with a school like Cornell. So the Cornell supplement is really interesting. They have all these different questions depending on what school you apply to. Majority of them are asked very differently, but they all are basically seeking the same type of answer. Uh, before we get to that, I will say one more thing about the School of Engineering. The School of Engineering, when you click on it, it asks you not just what major you're interested in applying to within the School of Engineering. Let's say you pick chemical engineering or something. But they'll also ask you, when did you most recently take a physics course? That's them trying to figure out, did you just take conceptual physics or did you take physics physics? Um, they also ask you the question of what's the highest math class that you will have completed by your high school graduation. You know, they're so into this because different schools uh, report differently. They have different types of schedules. So they want to make sure they're, they're really making sure your math levels are up to the ability they need to be. Um, so that's important. But then below that, the School of Engineering also asks, have you taken a chemistry course in high school, uh, at least for some of their majors. Uh, and then below that, they also were asking, um, what three words best describe you? And I would tell you to answer these as honestly as possible with an eye toward what would you want to share with someone who is interested in engineering. It doesn't have to be all engineering based words here, but, but do sort of tip your hat, if you will, to the idea that you are applying to an engineering school. So saying three things that have absolutely nothing to do with engineering in any which way or would have no upshot for someone interested in engineering probably is not the wisest decision to go with, but you do you and try to be honest here. The next questions they ask are what are three words you would use to describe Cornell engineering? So they want you to describe for them, them, to prove that you've done your due diligence, you've done your research, you know what you're talking about when you're applying to this school. Uh, so that is also an area where you don't want to just throw out fancy words like, like prestigious or impressive. You should use words that are a little bit less superficial and a little bit more focused on uh, important values that the school holds, like collaboration, inclusive, excellence, stuff like that. Um, but Definitely do your reading of the Cornell University website or when you go on your tour information session, take notes to learn about how the School of Engineering at Cornell describes itself so that you can pair it back to them the things that they want to hear and the things that you resonate with the most. All right, so then let's finally get to the section, I think. I think there's no other little tips or tricks I want to give you. Let me just double check. I'm clicking through the application as I look. Oh, there is one more question they ask you. Um, which of the following activities do you spend significantly time, a significant time doing eight hours or more a week? So this sort of dovetails with your resume, things like cooking meals for my household, driving family members around. Cornell basically wants to get a sense of like, what are you spending your spare time doing? Are you just on YouTube all night? I hope you're not, other than to watch my video. But um, what, what are you doing? And some of these things, again, are living on my own. I don't live at home, managing family budgets, religious practice. 
they really want to get a sense of what are you spending your time doing, especially in the event your extracurricular resume does not make that clear. But it's also okay for you to repeat yourself here because, uh, you know, it's important to give a full inclusive picture of how you are spending your time so they understand what your work-life balance is like and what other demands have been placed on you in the context of your overall achievements when they're considering your application. I think that's it before we get to the actual essay page. I know you've been waiting with bated breath. Uh, once we get to the actual writing page, that's where the fun starts. Most of the supplemental essays on Cornell's supplement uh, will be 650 words in length. Uh, and I love that. I think that it's wonderful that a school is still requiring students to actually communicate effectively for that many words. Because when you have to write, when you, or when you, let me put it this way, when you can write 650 words and you do ultimately write 600 or more words, and you do it successfully, a school has so much more insight into how your brain works, how you think, because how we write is a reflection of how we think. And it's much easier to paper over a lot of um, dysfunction in your brain when you only have to write 150 words or 200 words and have help editing that and all. It's much harder to paper over problems with the way you think or clarity and in, in reasoning or logic when you have to write 600 to 650 words. Um, and so I really give props to Cornell because Cornell is one of those old school schools that is holding on to the fact that it wants, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, its applicants to be able to write a compelling essay of 500, 600, 650 words max uh, to state the case as to why they are ultimately interested in pursuing the major in question at the school that they are applying to at Cornell, basically. And that's a summary of their question, but at the end of the day, it's actually a different question, in fact, altogether, depending on the school you are applying to. And so let's just cover some of those examples. Uh, in the case of the College of Architecture, Art and Planning, they have one of more avant-garde questions. You have 650 words to respond to. What is your thing? What energies, what, I'm sorry, what energizes you or engages you so deeply that you lose track of time? That sounds a little like a common app essay prompt, but it's not. Everyone has different passions, obsessions, quirks, inspirations. What are yours? So that's the, the first essay I start with because if you're applying to the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning, you're probably thinking, well, answer the question directly. And I do want you to answer it, but I want you to use as your supporting evidence proof from your past that would give them confidence that you've given a great deal of thought to your thing being the thing you're going to be studying at Cornell's College of Architecture, Art, and Planning. And then I want you to be able to transition throughout that body to showing how you plan to pursue your thing at the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning in specifics so that you can provide specific anecdotes, specific examples of how you pursuing that thing at Cornell is going to be a really special experience for you and one that you wouldn't be able to replicate at another school. Uh, so even though that question does not mention anything about your, your focus of study within the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning, you do ultimately want to uh, make it so that they understand that you have eyes only for the College of Architecture, Art, and Planning at Cornell. But all the other questions are a little bit more straightforward. For instance, um, the... College of um, Arts and Sciences. Students in arts and sciences embrace the opportunity to delve into multifaceted academic interests embodying in 21st century terms Ezra Cornell's any person, any study, study founding vision. Completely wasted sentence, by the way. Tell us, because it has nothing to do with what you're really being asked to do here. Tell us about the areas of study you are excited to explore and specifically why you wish to pursue them in our college. Talk about a non sequitur. Uh, there is no need to confuse you with Ezra Cornell's philosophy there. Basically, this 650-word essay, if you're applying to the College of Arts and Sciences, should do just what the last sentence asks you to do, which is uh, show yourself engaging in Cornell-specific opportunities as a student within the College of Arts and Sciences so that they feel and think by the end of the essay that you really have, again, eyes only for Cornell's College of Arts and Sciences, you also have space in the 650-word essay to, of course, allude to a few things you've done in the past that have led you to this point 
and led you to the realization that you want to ultimately pursue uh, the course of study or studies that you want to pursue within the College of Arts and Sciences. I should mention for all the 650 word essays, you always want to have a thesis and an introductory paragraph. You always want to have a body that supports the thesis in several paragraphs in greater depth. That's where you give your really juicy details, specific details. And then you always want to have a conclusion that doesn't just restate the thesis. In fact, I don't think it should restate anything in that introductory paragraph, but it should say something new, thoughtful, reflective, and something that will make the reader really value your voice and say to themselves quietly, you know, this is a perspective we want to have on campus. Um, so again, regardless of the essay you're pursuing with, uh, with um, Cornell, definitely keep that sort of overall arching structure in mind. But as you see, College of Arts and Sciences at least has a more direct question after their first sentence, which is basically just a um, sort of like a trick to, to, <laughs> to confuse people who get overwhelmed easily. Um, but basically show the progression from why, from where you are now, how you got to where you are now quickly, and then dovetail into showing, don't just tell, showing how you would engage in those areas of study in particular. What, professors you would want to work with, what uh, course or two you would want to take, what uh, research you would want to pursue, ways in which you could augment your curriculum from outside the classroom. All these things are fair game when we think about telling us the areas of study you are excited to pursue and explore, and specifically why you wish to pursue them in our college, all right? Cornell S.C. Johnson College of Business. What kind of business student are you? Again, many students have never majored in business. Um, so that's an awkward initial question, but as you read deeper, um, they're going to explain using your personal academic or volunteer work experiences, describe the topics or issues that you care about. So this is you proving it. You have to go back in your past and prove it. Don't just restate your resume. Talk about the more emotive, uh, elements of sort of why you got involved in the business club or the stock club or why you... Uh, do what you do related to real estate in your spare time. Um, don't just restate your responsibilities with organizations or activities. And why are these things important to you? Your response should convey how your interests align with the school to which you are applying within the SC Johnson College of Business, either Dyson or um, the uh, the plot of economics and management or the Cornell, Peter, and Stephanie Nolan School of hotel administration. So yes, you're going to look at the past, but you're also going to talk about your goals now and your goals for the future. So again, this is another essay where you have so much space to run, you should be able to paint at least three paragraphs worth of you engaging in the life of the school within the college of business that you want to attend. Get specific, get hyper-focused, describe again a course, a professor, a, a, a research opportunity, all of the above, that really speak to you, and hopefully you'll be able to make it convincing based off of your past progression. So like if you have volunteered or interned at a local motel, and you're applying to the uh, School of Hotel Administration, talk about what you learned at that hotel. Talk about the good, talk about the bad, and talk about why you are mo more motivated than ever to study uh, hotel administration you know, hospitality, et cetera, within, uh, within that school. So it's about connecting things. It's about making sure that that progression is clear in terms of your life trajectory. So this seems like an authentic, good fit for you. Uh, engineering is one of the schools that's not asking for a 650 worder. Uh, this one only requires a 250 worder twice. Um, so they are looking for two 250 worders. Um, and ultimately, though, they're still trying to get at very similar information than the ones from the other schools. How do your interests directly connect with Cornell Engineering? If you have an intended major, what draws you to that department? If you are unsure what specific engineering field you would like to study, describe how your general interest in engineering most directly connects with Cornell Engineering. Again, they want to see that you want to go to Cornell Engineering. If you could write this about Northwestern Engineering or WashU Engineering or Penn Engineering or NYU Engineering, or any of these schools engineering, you have failed the essay. You need to make sure it's hyper-focused on opportunities that only exist, opportunities in the classroom, outside the classroom, that only exist as a Cornell engineering student. 
It also notes that it may be helpful to concentrate on one or two things that you were most excited about. That's to give a little hint to the engineers that if they cover too much ground, they're not going to be able to go into too much depth on any of it. So they're basically giving you a writing tip right in there because engineers aren't always the best writers. Sometimes they are, but many times they are not. And they're basically saying, we'd rather you go deep and narrow than broad and shallow. And that's always my approach as well. I would rather you go deeper in these essays, even the 650 word essays, than go too broad because then it looks like you're just picking and choosing random things. And if you're picking and choosing random things, you're not going to go deep enough into any of them, in which case it's easier to sort of fake your way through it, or so you may think. But to a school like Cornell that can read a lot of these essays and understand this, the, the posers from the real serious applicants, you, you want to go deep and narrow much more than you want to go broad and shallow. Their second question is either describe an engineering problem that impacts your local community. This could be your school, neighborhood, town, region, or group you identify with. Describe one, two, three things you might do as an engineer to solve the problem. Or you can pick on their diversity essay, which is diversity in all forms is intrinsic to excellence in engineering. Engineering, the best solutions to complex problems is often achieved by drawing from the diverse ingenuity of people from different backgrounds, lived experiences and identities. How do you see yourself contributing to the diversity and or inclusion of the Cornell engineering community? What is a unique voice you would bring to Cornell engineering community? This is being done to diversify Cornell engineering. So there, it's sort of like a gimme to those people who do have some unique perspective or background. Uh, but regardless of your background or demographics, try to use this essay to your advantage if you choose to do it uh, by sharing, again, a perspective that you really feel like you hold firmly or strongly and how it's impacted you and how it will inform you and your work as a budding engineer within the College uh, of Engineering at Cornell. But many students who don't come from an underrepresented minority background will probably gravitate toward question A, and many students who gravitate more toward um, an underrepresented background may gravitate toward question B. But in both cases, you got to still work it, use all 250 words with an intro thesis, a body to support the thesis, a conclusion that goes a step beyond the thesis. Human Ecology asks, how has your decision to apply to the College of Human Ecology been influenced by your related experiences? How will your choice of major impact your goals and plans for the future? Of all the questions that basically are sort of asking the same questions, I like the College of Human Ecology the best. It's the most direct. It basically says, show us from your past, prove to us with examples from potentially the future that you are a good fit for our school. Okay, make, make us really sure that you're applying to human ecology, not because Craig said that it's a public school and it's a higher acceptance rate, <laughs> but because uh, were you actually interested in human ecology uh, and you've done your research and there's proof in the pudding in terms of your background and there's real motivation in terms of the way you frame it and your argument throughout the essay and also the details you use to describe how you would engage in the College of Human Ecology are beyond reproach so that by the time you're done your 650 word essay, they're like, this guy bleeds human ecology. You know, like she, he, he or she needs to be in our school because they're like an expert in our school. And they're also really making a convincing case that their value system, uh, academically, professionally, what have you, really aligns with what we have to offer uh, within the College of Human Ecology. School of Industrial and Labor Relations as well, that is a public using your personal academic or volunteer work experiences. Describe the topics or issues that you care about and why they are important to you. Your response should show us that your interests align with the ILR school. Again, I like that question too, because ultimately they're, they're laying out the roadmap for what you need to do. You need to pick on a few data points from your past that and explain sort of why you did those things and how they were enjoyable enough or motivating enough to get you where you are now, where you're applying to the ILR school, and why you are convinced that the ILR school, compared to other schools which offer something similar, which there's really nothing quite similar to that uh, out there, especially in the Ivy League, but why the ILR school would really meet your goals not only for the next four years, but also, again, well into the future, your professional goals um, and, and you know, where, how is that school going to be indispensable in terms of you reaching your, your ultimate goals? All right. As I often say, I only do these in one take. I don't stop. So sometimes I may go off on tangents. I apologize if I do. Long story short, Cornell is a hard school to get into. It's an Ivy League school, but it's also a public school. It's also a school that does really value students 
thinking out clearly and carefully why they want to go because uh, they give you all the space to make the case and you're either going to rise or you're fall, going to fall based off of your essays here. Um, I didn't talk about the Brooks School of Public Policy essay, but it's very similar to the one in ecology. Um, but long story short, it's the same general idea. If you have 650 words, try to use at least 625 of them. I always try to have my kids hit 649, 648, 650, um, because you want to use every word for what it's worth to make the most strong, the strongest, most compelling case uh, that you can make that you have done your research, uh, you have eyes only for Cornell, uh, you have the evidence from your past and your present uh, experiences and motivations to really make this closing argument that is this very, very uh, intimidating for some, but really awesome opportunity for others uh, because 650 words, if you have love for this school, you should be able to gather your thoughts and organize your thoughts and structure your thoughts and make a closing argument that would make the best defense lawyer uh, blush. Uh, and so I really want you to do that. If you work with me, like all my private clients do, they crush their college applications and their supplements in particular because we work on draft after draft to make sure that their argument is honed as well as possible. If you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to collegemeister.com. If you're liking these videos, simply like this video and also subscribe to my channel because maybe other colleges you will be applying to or are interested in learning about will be featured in future videos of mine. I am the College Meister Craig Meister. Until next time, I hope you enjoy this video. Stay safe and good luck getting into Cornell University.